So, halika na. Let's uh, refer this to this trashing. Okay? So, trashing is basically what happens when you have a lot of processes. You have a multi-programming system. And uh, when a process is requesting for a page that is not in the memory, remember at this point in time in our study, we are, we are already in the... We have the cost of demand paging, and we have virtual memory, and the disk is an extension of the physical memory. So what happens is when uh, when a process requ requests for a page that is not in the physical memory, it has to be paged in from the sec from the backing store or from the disk. Right? And through time, as the processes are executing, there will be a lot of page faults happening, and that is the Result, that results to thrashing. So if you increase the number of processes that are running, essentially, uh, the operating system will try to maximize the number of processes that are running So, in order to increase CPU utilization. But in doing so, because we have demand paging and virtual memory implementation, after some time, after you have a lot of processes in the main memory, this will result to thrashing. Right? And essentially, the CPU, CPU utilization will fall because the processor will just spend its time paging in and paging out uh, pages that are used by the processors. Okay? So the question is, why does demand paging work? Actually, paging in general, why paging works? It's because of what you call the locality model. When you say locality model, if you have a program, most of the memory accesses that you are that a program or a function is doing will be located to a certain memory area only, a certain range of memory area, and that is what is being capitalized by uh, paging, demand paging, okay? And as the program executes, the or the process executes the process will uh, migrate from one locality to another. Okay? So, for example, if you have a program with a lot of functions, and in the main, in the main C program, in the main, fun in the main function, you call a function, what will happen is the execution will jump to the function, when you call that function. And all memory access patterns will be, uh, will be using, let's say, parameters and local variables, which is part of a particular locality of that particular function. So that's what we mean by that. Okay? And thrashing occurs when the size of the locality, the sum of all the sizes of the locality is greater than the total memory size. Okay? So we'll see that uh, later. So what we do is to limit the effects by using uh, local or uh, priority page replacement. Okay? So this is just an illustration of a refer memory reference pattern. Okay? So at some point in the execution of uh, a program, merong certain memory area na laging gamit na gamit. Yung, yung laging gamit na gamit na yun, yun yung tinatawag na locality. So in order to solve, in order to solve uh, thrashing, in order to prevent thrashing, what you can do is, sabi nga dito, is to limit or to use a uh, uh, local replacement. So you have to define now, yung tinatawag na, uh, we have a solution called uh, uh, working set model. Okay? So ang idea dito, para ang idea ng working set model, okay, so this is the process. You have to identify what are the pages that will most likely be used by, by this process in this particular window of time. And you load that in the physical memory so that uh, the, page, the page faults will not happen later in the execution. But that's what we mean by the working set model. So here you define a working set window delta, which is a fixed number of page references. For example, uh, 10,000 instructions, what are the pages? That's the delta. What are the pa memory pages that are being referenced in that 10,000 instructions? And we define WSS sub i, the working set of a process P sub i, 
as the total number of pages referenced in the most recent delta, which actually varies over time. Uh, as an example, uh, you see here, uh, for example, this is the re page references. This is the page references. At time T1, at, at this point in time, and if you set the delta, let's say 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, meaning in this set of instructions, these are the number of pages that were referenced by this particular process. So this is delta is 10. Therefore, the working set at this time T1 will be the pages 1, uh, 2, 5, 6, 7. Basically, the unique number, the unique pages that were used by the process in that interval, in that delta. Now, at time 2, here, and if you have this delta 10, the working set will be different. It varies over time because uh, at this point in time, the, uh, given the delta of 10, then the working set will be 3 to 4. So the idea of uh, the working set model is you try to load these pages. Uh, you try to load this page because this will be needed by the process. Okay? So that's the idea. Now, a critical part of the working set model is selecting the size, the window size or delta. If the size, if delta is too small, it will not encompass the entire locality. Let's say if you set delta to 1, right? So that's quite useless because you only have a size of 1, right? If delta is too large, it will encompass several locality, localities. So let's, uh, to visualize this properly, when we think of localities, we think of a function, right? Let's say you have the main function. The main function is treated as, as a single locality. It has Let's say if you define delta as the number of lines in that uh, C function, that will be the delta. In that delta, what are the no memory pages referenced in that main function? Now, in the main function, let's say you have a fact, you call a factorial function inside the main function. So the factorial function will be a different locality, and the number of lines in that uh, factorial function will define, for example, the locality of the factorial function. So the, that will require the amount, the, the number of pages, or the pages that will be used by the factorial function, okay? So we define D as the sum of all the working sets. So alimbawa, uh, one, two, uh, one, two, five, six, seven. So that's uh, a particular uh, size, so five, right? And we have other processes, we, we sum them, and we, got, we essentially get the total demand, of, the demand for frames, meaning, uh, if you look at a system and you examine all the processes and you examine the working set of each process You count them and then you sum them that will be the demand for frame. Well, you get the idea okay. And that is an approximation of the locality now uh, We denote M as the number of frames if we have D greater than the number of frames That will result to trashing so as a policy to prevent thrashing, okay, you, uh, you suspend some process para uh, hindi maging true itong condition na You get the idea of the working set? Okay? So in summary, you examine the processes running and analyze the working set size okay, for each process, get the sum. Is the sum greater than the number of available frames? Remember, frames is physical memory, right? And if it's greater, then there is a possibility of crashing and then just swap out or suspend some process, right? That's the working set model. So uh, that's a good idea, working set model. But how do you keep track of the working set? Right? So we can do that by using a timer and uh, a reference bit. So the idea here, or the, this, the mechanism described here para makip track mo yung working set is uh, you have a timer, interval timer, and for example, you have a delta, the window size, 10,000 instructions, for example. The timer will interrupt, will trigger an interrupt after 5,000 time units, right? 
and then you also have a data struct, uh, uh, additional information bits in the memory for each page. Okay? And whenever a timer interrupts, uh, copy and sets the values of all reference bits to zero. So, because it's going to the working set, the references. So, when you trigger the interrupt, let's say after 5,000 instructions, you clear mo ngayon yung, ano, you clear mo yung bits ng mga copyhain mo siya, and then you clear mo ngayon, okay? Uh, yung information about the the page, yung mga bits, two memory bits plus additional reference bit. Okay? So, if one of the bits is in memory, uh, if one of the bits in memory, ito, okay, and the reference bit, then the page is in the working set. So, that's how you determine the working set of the process. Okay? So, of course, there are, this, there are some inaccuracy for this, but it allows you to determine the working set para malaman, para makapag-decide ka ngayon kung kailangan mo mag-suspend ng process kasi kulang ka na nga sa frames. Eh. Okay. So that's the idea. So this is just how. This is the how to capture or to measure the world. Okay. So examine, just examine the page table and the information bits to each page in the end. So, that's one solution to prevent crashing using the working set model. Another solution is using the page fault frequency. Okay. So basically, when a page fault happens, mati trigger yung page fault handler, diba? Mati trigger yung page fault handler. So if you maintain account of uh, if you maintain account of the number of page faults, every time na trigger ng page fault, account mo yon. And then for a window of time, you measure the page fault rate. And depending on the value that you've computed based on the page fault rate, you can actually uh, adjust the processes that are in the system. Meaning, oh, your page fault rate natin ay uh, one page fault per uh, 1,000 1, memory reference. Okay pa yan. But if we have one page fault per 100 memory reference, mukhang kailangan nyo mag-swap out ng process. So, we measure that using the page fault frequency and we, we use a policy depending on the, on the value. So, as you, see, as you see here in the graph, right? so you have the number of frames. So, meron ka lang threshold, threshold dito. So, you have an upper bound and a lower bound. Okay? So, if the page fault rate is high, lumampas na siya dito sa bound na to, you, in, you increase the number of frames for that process. But if lower bound, okay, so you uh, decrease the frames for the process, right? So yeah, so the relationship between uh, page fault rate and uh, the working set, so they have direct relationship, okay? So the working uh, set changes over time, okay? For example, this is the working set at this period, okay? And uh, you have peaks and valleys over time. And of course, basically, the page fault rate, pag nasa peak ka, you have a high page fault rate. That's the idea. Okay? So, yeah. So just write your questions sa papel. So, so, these are the two approaches to solving the thrashing. We have working set model and we have the page, using the page fault rate threshold. Okay? Now, we move on to memory map files. Uh, memory mapping. Why do we need memory mapping? Right. Uh, you've written programs in C or in other programming languages that read files from a disk. Right. So you do that. And usually that will involve uh, disk I.O. Right. Disk I.O. And disk I.O. is quite expensive. So the idea of memory mapped file is uh, usually, the process of reading and writing files is you F open, read the file. If, if not null, you read the data. Then you perform some operation, you write the data again. Right? That's the process. Right? Now, in memory mapped files, what happens is after opening a file, the operations will not be using system calls that directly access the disk, but rather the operations that you will be using to manipulate the contents of the file will be 
memory based. Right? In that way, you prevent you prevent uh, you prevent <coughs> disk I/O and kumbaga hindi naman pinaprevent but you delay disk I/O para pag isesave na lang siya sa kamo siya sa kasya sa kasya magperform ng disk I/O pero pag habang minamanipulate mo yung contents ng file nasa memory siya. Get the idea? So uh, so it allows uh, file I/O to be treated as a routine memory access by mapping a disk block to a page in the memory. A file is initially re uh, read using demand paging. Okay? A page size portion of the file is read from the file system into a physical page and the reads and writes will be done on the page like memory access, right? like move instruction. Right? So this simplifies uh, everything. Okay? And uh, when does the written data make it to the disk? So you periodically call a close, okay? A close system call. Uh, siguro may experience yun na to na nag-save kayo sa file, nag-f-write kayo, di ba? Nag-f-write kayo. Pero, sabihin nyo, sir, bakit hindi nag-f-close kayo? Ba't parang hindi naman na-save yung file, di ba? Hindi kayo nag-f-close, okay? Nag-write na kayo pero hindi na-save, okay? That, that means that yung nasa memory ay hindi na-flash doon sa disk. Are you get the idea? That's what you mean by that. Now, how does this work, right? So, uh, this is for I/O. No? Uh, so, this is an illustration of how uh, memory mapping works. So, you have a disk file here. Now, disk file. You some file. I'll show you later the command. A disk file is usually stored on the disk. A file is usually stored as disk blocks. Merong disk block yon. And you can. What happens is, yung size ng disk block is usually the same size as the page. Okay? So, this is the, these are the blocks of a file. You load that into memory, physical memory, you have the pages, and then you simply map that to a process. Ito yung processes ngayon, ito ngayon yung, ano, ito yung page, uh, page, pages na ginagamit ng process, ito yung ginagamit, ito yung page na ginagamit ng process B, then they can perform a uh, uh, Exchange of data. They can ma they can manipulate the file by just manipulating the pages of memory. Okay. So how do we do that? I, I forgot. I took note of the command. Okay. So to determine the uh, the page size used in Linux, uh, you can use the get conf command which tells you the uh, size of the page. Ibig sabihin, 1496. Okay? Yung 0x1000. That's the size of a page. Okay? That means uh, the each, each one here is 1496. Okay? KB. Okay? So, gusto natin ipakita ngayon yung uh, block size naman. Okay? Block size. So, we can use... Uh, You can use the debug fs, oh no, block dev command, block devices. Baka hindi na natin abutin yung block devices, but we have a parameter called get block size. Get block size. Get, get bsz. Dev sda. <coughs> no spelling ba ako? BSC. Okay, so this tells you na yung page size yung page size okay, as well as the block size are the same sizes. Ibig sabihin, you can directly map kung baga yung party yung pag-divide ng this ay 49.16. So, using demand paging, pwede mong i-load, i-map ng diretsyo yung isang block. Now, ang halimbawa, may isang file ka uh, hello, hello, .c. Uh, cut, hello, .c. Ito yung text pa. Ito yung C code mo. How do you determine the uh, How do you determine the
blocks associ ilang blocks kaya yung ginagamit ng hello.c so we have a command called debug fs that will allow you to retrieve the blocks the number of blocks so we have the stat parameter at uh, stat command uh, let's say uh, dot slash hello dot c okay and then saan siyang nakalagay na file system for the partition dev sda5 So it will try to wala daw. So siguro kailangan full path. So ilagay natin ang home. Job. Okay. So anong sinasabi niya dito? So that file, yung hello.c nakalagay dito na meron siyang 8 blocks ginagamit. Okay? So, yung hello.c na yun occupies 8 blocks on the disk. And ito yung mga characteristics. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag min min memory map mo yung hello.c, mag-occupy siya ng 8 uh, pages sa memory. Of course, with some data structures. Additional data structures. Okay? You get the idea? So, that's how things work. Okay. So, one more thing. Para may pakita natin yung memory mapping. Ano na discuss natin to last time using shared memory. So we have here. I I don't know if I demo this. But this is an example of producer-consumer implementation using a shared memory. Using shared memory. So here are the guidelines. So as you can see here, you have to define the block size, which is 1496, the page size, and then this is the name of the shared memory. And these are the strings that you would like to write on the shared memory. And notice here, uh, you have here the uh, sh uh, sh shame or sham FB, file descriptor. Okay? So what happens is, shem open, okay, this will create a file, an anonymous file. Okay? So essentially, yung, the way shared memory works in Linux is nagkikreate siya ng anonymous file and then nagre-return siya ng uh, file descriptor. And yung file descriptor na yon, okay, is what you use to memory map that particular, uh, to memory map, okay, that particular file. So, ang gagaw, kung ikaw convert mo yung memory mapping na file, file memory mapping to shared memory, ang gagawin mo lang is, instead of using shem, you use open. Open system call. Para makapag-open kayo ng file. Ordinary file. You get the idea? So that's what we mean by that. Now, to illustrate this, so GCC, so minus O prod. Open na new terminal. CD one two five volts. CD yes yes. Para makita natin yung memory mapping, no? CD shared mem. Okay, GCC minus O pod. This is the consumer process. Con dot C. O minus R T. So, iraran mo na natin yung iraran natin yung producer. Does does prod? Let's make it a background process. Okay. So these are the process number and these are the process number. Okay. So we can actually look at the memory map. So cut. PS cut prof. Ah, yung process ID niya ay six eight five one. 
if you don't want to use the debugger, so there, the, uh, the, there is a maps folder in the Okay, so this is the memory map of that process, okay, without using, ano, without using GDB. Kasi di ba yung pinito sa inyo lang sa info proc mapping para makita yung mapping sa memory. Okay. Ito, using the proc file system, okay. So nakalagay dyan yung PP na property na attribute, that means they are private. Okay, which means private to a process. So this is for, uh, this is for the, uh, Ito, familiar na to sa inyo. This is for the text section for this consumer process. Now, if you look at the other end, uh, nagaran pa ba? Ang namatay hindi pa. Okay. So, we can actually look at the con process. So, 6852. 6852. Then, maps. Uh, so, Ah, pansin nyo ngayon dyan na yung pinakita ko sa inyo last time na yung producer process saka yung consumer process they, they have the same uh, text section, same address because they are, they are seeing the uh, virtual address okay? and again, makapansin nyo dyan na yung attribute niya IP meaning it is private, pro, uh, private memory area for the particular process okay? but as you move down as you move down you will see here a uh, RS. Nakikita nyo ba yan? Uh, can you see this value? Uh, this memory area? Okay? And you can see here that this is S. This is a shared memory. Okay? And saan nakalagay yan? Sa dev shem OS. Ano tong OS na to? Saan yun makikita yan? Makikita nyo yan dun sa Makikita nyo yan doon sa pangalan ng shared memory. You get the idea? So, ganun din yan. Yung pinakita ko sa inyo, nandun yan sa, uh, sa prod. Ito naman, uh, makikita nyo, nandun din yan sa con. Okay? So, yan. So, pinakita natin dito na yung dalawang process, nag-execute sila, and they were able to use shared memory and yung shared memory na yun actually is a file memory map using dev uh, using the dev shem os this is the name essentially kung ano yung name nung uh, shared memory mo you get the idea so that is what uh, how uh, these things are implemented in uh, okay uh, implemented in linux So moving on, uh, okay. so there's also uh, memory mapping of uh, I/O input output. Okay. Uh, the idea here is for some devices, lalo na yung mabilis yung pag-access ng devices, mas maganda yung memory map mo na siya. Usually kasi, if you have I.O. devices, kailangan nyo pang mag-send mag sa control port, tapos sa control port, mag-send ka pa ng, after that, mag, uh, you need to use the data port to retrieve the data. If you look at the device driver's implementation dun sa ICS OS, yung display, sa yung keyboard, may mga ports dun. So, you uh, put something on the, let's say, an I.O. port, and then port number, and then uh, a port number for retrieving the data. Now, there are instances na kung saan you can actually just map uh, certain memory area para uh, pag nag-write ka dun sa memory area na yon, automatically it's just writing to the device. An example of this is the video RAM. Okay? So, uh, I think, I forgot the memory address but B8, some B800 or something. If you write something in this memory area, automatically lalabas sa, dis sa display, sa screen yan. So, yun yung video RAM na tinatawag. So, it's an example of uh, memory mapping. Okay? For I.O. Okay? Uh, so, here is also another example. 
Okay, so look, may, may ano ka, may uh, device drivers ka, okay? So, i-map mo na yun sa memory and then you perform the read and write dun na sa, ano, sa, sa memory. For example, uh, pwede nyo gawin yan, uh, yung LAN card. Okay, so you have LAN card, so you have to send packets out of, in and out of the LAN card instead of issuing IOCTL commands, okay? Uh, you simply uh, access the memory area that was bugged for that particular device and then you can send and receive packets. Okay. So shared memory in the Windows API. So this is an example. Pinakita ko sa inyo kanina yung sa Linux part, Linux side, kung paano gumagana yung shared memory. Okay. So dito sa Windows, if you want to try this. Okay. So yun. So meron lang tatlong functions, basically creating a file and creating the mapping and then viewing the file. Okay? Pareho lang ng kabila sa Linux. Okay. So, the next part is allocating kernel memory. What we've been discussing so far is how you allocate memory for user processes. Okay? But remember that the kernel should be in the memory first before it can create, it can manage memory for processes. So, uh, there is a special way that the kernel manages its own use of memory. Usually, if you look at kernel source code, meron kayo makikita niya na k-malloc. Yung k-malloc is different from the malloc that you use in the standard C functions. Yung k-malloc is allocating kernel memory. Okay? So, if you look at operating system kernel. So, why? Why do you, why, why do you need to do that? Bakit kailangan, kahit, bakit kailangan iba yung pag-manage ng, ng kernel memory sa user memory? The first is, uh, the kernel requests memory for, stru uh, for structures of varying sizes. So since control program na yung kernel, marami siyang data structures na ginagamit like yung uh, uh, PCB, process control block, okay, the PCB. So that's one structure. Uh, file system structures, okay? So marami structures na nagbabago-bago yung size na hindi kailangan fixed page, fixed size page like 4096 for user process, okay? So another reason is that uh, some kernel memory needs to be contiguous. Okay? Remember, kaya meron tayong paging, idea ng paging sa user processes. It's because, sabi natin, yung mga processes naman, merong locality model na hindi mo kailangan i-load lahat sa memory yung lahat ng kailangan ng process pag kailangan na sa siya i-load via demand paging. Pero yung sa, ano, yung sa kernel, this may nagmamanipulate nga siya, may direct access siya sa mga I.O. devices and kailangan niya ng contiguous memory, so it has to be addressed differently. Okay? So, there are several ways to the way the kernel manages its memory use. Okay? The first one is called the, the body system. Uh, the body system allocates memory from fixed size segment cons consisting of physically contiguous pages. So, sabi natin, kailangan minsan na contiguous pages ng mga ng mga data structures na ginagamit ng kernel. So, ito yung ginag ginagawa niya. So, uh, you have a called, uh, what they call the power of two allocator. So, pag yung isang process nag-request siya, this is example, no? For example, assume a 256 kilobyte chunk available. So, meron isang piece of memory, amount of memory, piece of memory. 256KB available. And then the kernel requests 21KB. Okay? For some use. Kailangan na halimbawa sa isang uh, data structure for a device driver. Okay? 21KB ang kailangan niya. Using a body system, ang gagawin niya, yung 256 will be split into two. Okay? Two chunks. AL and AR. Left, right. Each of 128KB. 256 divided by 2. 1 to 8 kabila, 1 to 8 sa kanan. Okay? Then, masyadong malaki pa yung 1 to 8. Okay? So, you further split. Okay? Uh, uh, each of these into BL and BR. So, level yung A. A is B second level. So, 1 to 8 divided by 2, 64 KB. Kaso, masyadong malaki pa siya for the power of two allocator. Okay? So, you further divide 64, level C, 32 KB. Can this satisfy 21 KB? Yes. Ano yung next na division ng 32? 16. Diba? 16, hindi niya na kayang i-accommodate yung 21 KB. Therefore, the kernel will use the 32 KB chunk. Okay? So, the, and the advantage of this body system is that 
when uh, when the kernel uh, when the kernel requires a larger chunk of memory, pwede niyang emerge din na lang, okay? Via what you call co co coalescing, okay? And the disadvantage of course is fragmentation. So dito 21 KB ang kailangan ng kernel, pero ang inallocate sa kanya ay 32 KB. So merong internal fragmentation. Okay, get the idea? Okay. So this is how it's done, how it's done. So you have the contiguous page, divide into two, and then satisfy the request of 21 KB. Okay? The rest of the body system allocator. Now, the next allocator for kernel, for kernel memory is the slab in the structure, ah, uh, slab allocator. So the idea of the slab is you have a cache, simply a cache, and you have pre-allocated memory chunks of different sizes. So kung baga, nagamit lang ng kernel is uh, kukuha na lang siya dun sa mga uh, chunks na yon, na pre-allocated. Okay? So you have a slab with a one or more physically contiguous pages and you have a cache which consists of one or more slabs. Okay? So single cache for each unique kernel data structure and uh, meron mga objects na doon tinatawag. So objects, objects are the programming na naman yan. So, and you have instantiation of the data structure. So an example of this is the PCB. So, by default, meron na, kumbaga, may pre-allocated na na memory using slab allocator para sa process control block. So, pag nagkaroon ng, pag kailangan mag-create ng process, kukuha na lang siya dun sa pre-allocated na uh, slab. Okay? That's the idea. And, uh, okay? So, initially, mark as free, kung halimbawa yung isang pre-allocated na memory na yon, Okay? Pag ginamit na, used siya. Otherwise, uh, partially used, okay? And the benefits include no fragmentation. Alam mo na yung size ng PCB. Alam mo, kernel yung ginagawa mo. Alam mo, gagamit, nagagamit ka ng PCB. So, ang gawin mo ngayon, mag-allocate ka na ng memory para sa mga PCBs. Pag may dumating na kailangan mo mag-create ng process, kuha ka na lang dun sa, ano, sa pool of PCB memory. Okay? So, no fragmentation. Alam mo yung size ng, ano, eh, ng data structure. Eh. And fast memory request. I-assign mo na lang yung pointer, okay? Instead of uh, allocating the memory from scratch, okay? And this is what happens. So you have the slabs, contiguous memory, okay? And from that slab, you have caches for certain uh, types of objects, okay? And then, yeah, about 7 KB objects. Ito yung size, halimbawa, ng isang PCB. Yeah, hindi na lang kukunin yan, okay? So that's what we mean by slab and I think Linux uses a slab allocation. Originally, Linux uses uh, the body system, okay, but for impor performance improvements, they're not using slab allocation. Okay. So, sa Linux, ang process control block niya ay struct, task struct, if you, I've mentioned this already, with uh, approximately 1.7 kilobytes, so that's what happens. Okay? So, merong variants like the slab and the uh, SLUB. Okay. So, yung slab, ano naman? SLOB. Yung SLOB, uh, for ano siya? For embedded systems. Walang particular data structure. Sizes lang. Small, medium, large. Okay. So, uh, yung isang system, kailan, uh, yung kernel, kailangan niya ng, ano, ng malaking memory. So, kukuha sa large. Okay. Of course, this will suffer from fragmentation. Okay. So there are other considerations when it comes to uh, paging. Okay. So like pre-paging, uh, ibig sabihin, in the same way as uh, initial frame amount of uh, frames initially allocated to a process, pwede rin i-page mo na lahat yung mga kailangan mo. So para ma-minimize na yung page fault during execution. Of course, you need to have some knowledge of the a working set, okay? Uh, page size, so kanina, pinakita ko kanina yung size, the default is usually 4096, okay? But, of course, there are advantages kung ano yung size na pipiliin mo. Pag malaki masyado, you might suffer from internal fragmentation, okay? Pag maliit naman, uh, yung mga contiguous memory, mahirap i-achieve, okay? So, yun. And of course, yung storage, yung page stable. Okay, depending on the page size, sabi natin, there are, na-mention natin, merong three ways to uh, minimize the overhead of 
storing the page table. Okay. TLB reach. Uh, so TL, uh, yung translation look aside buffer sabi natin, the purpose of this is fast access dun sa ano sa sa page table. Okay. So it's a cache for the page table. So yung TLB reach is the amount of memory accessible from the TLB. So ideally here, if you have a very large uh, TLB, okay, so yun yung TLB reach. So mas malaki yung, ma, ma, yung range of memory na pwede niya i-accommodate. And you can compute the TLB reach simply as the size of the uh, TLB multiplied by the size of its page. So yun yung amount of memory or range of memory na pwede niya access ng uh, TLB. Okay? So, yeah. so you can have uh, uh, increases in the page size okay, or you can have multiple page sizes. So this one here is uh, okay. this one here is an example of kumbaga, pwede i-control ng programmer yung ano, pwede i-control ng programmer yung page yung page code. Okay. So, this one, pag gumagalaki ng program, ito ang ganito yung page page in 1 to 8, okay, image kayo. Okay. And assuming that the size of uh, a page size here is uh, 128 uh, in bytes. Then, sabi natin na ano uh, unsigned short. Yung in like unsigned short. Right? So, yung isang program, yung first program, ang ginawa niya row major order. Okay? So, kung okay, i-initialize na lang sa zero, okay, yung data. Now, Using this approach, ang page font na mangyayari ay 16,884 for the page font. Pero, pag binago mo lang yung, kung binabas mo lang, binabas mo lang tayo, ay sa kanya yung pag-index mo, okay, mas konti yung page font na mangyayari. You get the idea? Kasi, yung pag-process mo ng data ay uh, parang ano, row major. Ganun. So, page font, page font, page font. Page font, page font, page font, page font. Unless pag gano'n lang, isang page font lang yun, may initialize mo kayo isang site. Okay, yun the idea? So, yun. Uh, locking. Okay. So, there are also uh, other issues like locking. Okay. Pages must sometimes be locked into memory. For example, yung mga drivers. Okay. So consider I/O pages that are used for copying a file from a device must be blocked from being selected for eviction by a page replacement algorithm. Okay. So what about naglaya ka ng flash drive, tapos nagkakapi ka ng malaking file doon? Okay. Hindi pwedeng yung kinakapi mong file ay maswap, maswap out. Diba? So that is uh, lucky. Pinning of pages to lock into memory. Okay, so... I guess that ends chapter 9. Okay. So, next meeting will start with storage and uh, I hope if you have questions, just write them. Try to answer that. Uh, next okay, so, pass the paper and then you can go.